Hey everyone, so in this video we're going to chat to you about how to install your Chemex 3 kilo washing machine. Um, I organized and built all the shelves and the railings and everything for it and we're also going to show you how to um, build your closet, so our closet door and all of the uh, storage ideas in that one. We put our washing machine on some runners um, because our washing machine is inside the cupboard. The idea is that you open the door, the washing machine comes out and it's on runners and it rolls out. You put everything in and then push it back in. That way you don't need to allow space above it to open the lid and everything like that. And you save space, space saving. All right, so I'm just uh, using the jigsaw to cut some notches out of these pieces here. This is just for the supports that are going to go under our washing machine. Um, so once I cut them all up, I'll take you inside and show you where I'm going to put them. Okay, so these pieces that I was cutting before, um, this is inside what's going to be our little laundry area. So as you can see, all I've done is glue and screw them on. Just like that it was a bit hard to get the camera in there while I was doing it which is why I'm showing you now now what I'm doing is attaching this wall here which is the wall for our laundry and then on this side we're gonna have some storage and whatnot so I'm just making sure it's the same distance equally between this wall and this wall um, and I'm just going to attach it with some screws down to those that piece there that I've just put on and then I'm just going to attach a bracket up here in the corner Way. it's not going to fall over I think that'll be about it I'm going to attach one to the bathroom while I'm going as well I'll then put a shelf in between them so I'll cut them and attach it which I've already started to mark up the height where it's going to go and uh, yeah I'll go from there so this is going to be the little shelf that our washing machine is going to sit on so where we've cut it, there are the edges are obviously just the inside of the melamine. So I've got this melamine um, edging stuff. So it's really easy to do. All you do is lay it on where it's going to be. You want it to leave about 10 mil over the edge and a couple mil over each side. You just chop it off. Oh. It's not going to stick in place until you apply heat. So you can either use um, a heat gun or you can use an iron or whatever to protect your iron and to protect your strip. Just using, what is it, baking paper. So put the baking paper over the top, make sure you keep your piece where it's got to be. Have your iron and apply heat. And I just rub it over a few times because you want to make sure that it sticks it's the heat, the chemical reaction, it sort of like melts the glue and makes it stick into the wood. If your wood was dirty or anything like that, it wouldn't stick very well. So you've got to make sure that it's clean, particularly if it's not new wood. Make sure it's on the cotton setting as well. I don't know why. It's just what the instructions say. Once you've applied the heat, turn your iron off. So I've just unplugged it. While the iron's cooling down, continually rub it on. So this cooling process, just while it's cooling down, keep on rubbing it to make sure that it sticks into place. And I'll show you what it's when it's done. So I'll do this for a couple minutes. You can also use a rolling pin as well. You don't need to use the iron, but I find while I've got the iron anyway, it's just easier to use it. So, take this off now. And it should be pretty stuck on, which it is. So now it's just time to trim it up. So you just use a, I don't know, Stanley knife or whatever you've got laying around. Put it on an angle and Slice it across. Do that around each edge and you're wheel done. So it's not 
not beautiful, but uh, it's better than what it was, and you can touch up any little bits with paint, which is what I'm going to do. Otherwise, it's off to the next side. Alright, so I'm just installing the draw runners for our washing machine. They're heavy duty, uh, 500 millimeter ones. They take up to 90 kilos, so that should be enough for the washing machine. I think that's only like 20 kilos or something. And then with the water in it, uh, they're the underside runners. They're the top bits, which I've just taken off. So all I'm doing is attaching the bottom bits first, and then I'll attach the top bits to the shelf, which the washing machine will sit on. Okay, so we got a power point installed where our washing machine will plug into and then down here we've got this wire connector which is where the bottom of this will plug into which comes up we then spoke to a caravan repair store about how to connect the washing machine to John Guest we thought about maybe just getting a John Guest to BSP or something and screwing it straight to it but they said all caravans and stuff actually have normal taps installed. So half inch BSP to John Guest. So John Guest comes up, screws onto the bottom of like a tap, and then your washing machine will just screw onto that. And then this will just get screw mounted onto the wall about here. Alright, so then your uh, inlet hose of the washing machine then screws on to the tap uh, just like in a household. And yeah, it goes there like that. So the outlet for the hose actually can go on either side of the washing machine. I believe it comes on the right hand side. So we moved it to the left and then this will just go into the shower which I will show you separately. So this is the hole we drilled into our shower cubicle. It's actually covered at the moment, which we'll talk about later. I think it's about 20 or 25 mil. It was just enough to just fit that drain hose in. So we did it into the shower wall, then into the wall next to it so we could then feed it through and then it drained into our shower and then that's how it drained into our um, grey water tank. The reason we had to do this was because Underneath where we sat the washing machine was uh, the wheel, so we couldn't just drill straight down to the ground and then do a connection that way. But we found draining in the shower worked just fine. So I've just put our first load of washing on. Um, I'm very excited because we smell. <laughs> We've had a few issues with plumbing and water leaks and all sorts of things. So I've got um, I think about four shirts in there, some underwear, boxes. So it fits a fair bit. I'm pretty happy. At the moment there is no leaks. So we'll see how it goes. Let's see if we can have a look at the load. Uh, it doesn't really show what the load looks like. No. Maybe we can show yeah, you right. after the pack fact and it's not spinning yet but once it starts spinning I'll bring the camera back so you can see how loud it is which was requested by someone else. So this is the rinse uh, part of our washing machine. You can see it's got a tiny shake as normal washing machines do and uh, it's about as loud as it gets so it's um, not too bad at all. Okay, so the reason why a lot of the washing machine installation wasn't actually in the cupboard is because we didn't get it at the time and we don't actually have the washing machine anymore. So we decided to get rid of it. Uh, the reason for this was because we were really finding that we needed some hanging storage 
and we just weren't getting the use out of the washing machine that we kind of wanted. This was mostly our fault because it's designed to do like small washing loads and that sort of thing, but we kind of wouldn't get around to doing washing until we had like a big load that would take three or four loads in the small washing machine. So then we just end up going to a laundromat anyway and then putting it in the dryer because we hadn't really worked out an efficient drying solution for the bus. We sort of tried some fold out clothes lines and that sort of thing, but nothing really worked. So we end up getting rid of it for this trip. We still have the washing machine uh, and we're just sort of seeing how it goes. And if we find that we do want it again, we'll just put it back in. But yeah, for now, it's not in the bus. So I thought I'd show you what is in that space now anyway. Uh, another thing is the door. Didn't really show putting the door on. It's just a piece of melamine. We've put a handle on it here. We put a mirror on it, a whiteboard so that we can write stuff like that. We also put a latch here because we found that uh, with the washing machine and we've got a drawer in there which you'll see the door kept opening while we were driving um, so we ended up putting a latch here closing that and then we can put something in there to lock it so if I open it all right so this is the inside of it now so we've got hanging clothes here it's just on a I think it's a do-it-yourself curtain rail uh, so that's there. We then have a laundry basket here, which we have sort of like wear again clothes or clothes you only wear a little bit. And then dirty clothes behind, some shelves um, on the door. So this is just like bamboo sorting things that you get from Kmart that we've just screwed into the door. Uh, two shelves, which I like the bottom shelf that you saw Claire build earlier. Just metal mine, cut the size, then edged. We then just have these little white brackets that they're attached to. They're attached to the wall, the shell's attached to that. We then have like a bit of a medicine drawer and then just some towels and that's where we keep like our, where we keep our tea towels and that sort of thing there. So yeah, that's it now. Um, so far it's working pretty good, but yeah, like I said, we won't really know until we test it for a while whether we prefer this or having our own washing machine. Uh, if you found this, this video useful, please like, subscribe, and share. And until next time, thanks. Bye. Um, what do you call them? What do you? What a drying towel thing. <laughs> Tea towels.